Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Ghost and today we're going to be back in the Tier 5 American Heavy Cruiser. The Tech Tree Heavy Cruiser. USS Pensacola, man. What a ship this is right here. So uh, I, uh, not too long ago, I was playing some games in the Pensacola. And this is a double feature video today. And it's not only a double feature video. You guys already saw... Uh, a video, or at least I uploaded a video, I hope you guys saw it, but I uploaded a Shimanto video not that long ago, a few hours ago. So you guys are going to be getting another video a few hours later. I know, you guys are just getting spoiled today. Unfortunately, the views on the videos, at least the last couple of videos, haven't been very good. Unfortunately, you guys seem to not be too interested in the Omano... In the Omano and in the uh, Agano? Okay, anyway. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we're doing another video today, and we're in the Pensacola. In my opinion, this ship right here, uh, this is the best cruiser at Tier 5, hands down. Uh, in, in terms of guns, it's just, it's, it's all there. Like, these guns are so disgusting. And hopefully these two games can show off that a little bit. Um, it's just amazing, man, what this cruiser is capable of doing, especially against other cruisers, or anything that goes broadside. I mean, this thing just rips everything apart. American 203mm guns, the 8-inch guns that the Americans have on their heavy cruisers, they are, in my opinion, the best cruiser guns in the game. I, there's no even, there's no question about it. Let me know in the comments below if you guys agree with me, but I think they are. We're going to be talking about these guns probably throughout the whole video. We're going to be showcasing some amazing shots um, and whatnot. So, I mean, man, it's going to be pretty nice. So, also, throughout the video, we'll talk about other things, too. We won't just talk about the guns. We'll talk about some of the Pensacola's other strengths uh, and a couple of her weaknesses that I'm sure you guys already know about. It's nothing new. But, uh, yeah, so, unfortunately, the, uh, the opening of this game right here in particular... Really, both of these games, the opening of the games, like the beginning portion, the first five to ten minutes, maybe like the first five to seven minutes, maybe not ten, but five to seven minutes, it's just me trying to like get a get a feel for the game and get an idea of what's happening. Like this game, for example, right here, most of the cruisers are actually playing properly. They're not all sailing broadside. They're moving around. They're, they're angling. So I'm not able to just have one of these dream games, unfortunately, where I can just slap everything. I mean, as you guys can see, a lot of the cruisers cruisers are unspotted there a lot of them are are quite far out and I don't really have any decent shots so I'm trying to move around and and just get a feel for things and try to position and whatnot now there is one battleship on each team this is like perfect matchmaking by the way like a whole bunch of cruisers American heavy cruisers this is like the dream matchmaking right here especially when you have a you know a full cruiser lobby and they're all tier four and five cruisers same tier and below it's a, it's a great time usually unfortunately though in this game a majority of the cruisers actually kind of knew what they were doing there are some mistakes that they end up making later on that I'm gonna completely you know take advantage of you guys are gonna see that coming up pretty soon but um, yeah in the meantime though we're just gonna take some pop shots here and there right the beginning of the game guys should always be kind of meh, eh, just you know eh, right you should be trying to get a feel of what's going on and, and getting an idea of what the enemy's doing and then making decisions later on right you should you don't ever expect the beginning of your games to go off you know like crazy all right the beginning of your matches you should always be trying to read the mini map and get an idea where everybody is and trying to position accordingly depending on where the enemy is right that's the whole idea uh behind everything really in this game um, this map also is interesting. I think it's the smaller version of Atlantic, or whatever the name of this map is. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember a lot of the map's names, and yet I play on them all the time. You would think, you know, I would know all these maps, like, on, on the spot, but no. You know, y'all should know by now on the channel, I'm Dr. Ghost Games, and my memory is not the greatest. So, you know, hey. Um, but, anyway, that's a really good shot right there. Uh, we just got a couple Citadels. We caught that Dallas slipping, man. And uh, just like that, we uh, send we we don't send him back to port, but we almost did. He's on very little HP, as you guys can see over there. Um, but I'm not going to open up yet. I'm I'm trying to wait until I'm kind of turned away. So once I take a shot at this California, um, you know I'll be safe. But he just shot his back guns at someone uh, in front of me. Um, I, his front guns though are still accounted for. I'm really hesitant, as you guys can see. We know. Pensacola has a giant citadel, right? It's not a secret. We talked about some weaknesses. Here's some weaknesses. The citadel on the Pensacola is huge. So you really got to be playing careful, right? 
Gotta be, you know, you gotta, you gotta use your concealment. You gotta take shots and, and angle away and, and not sail in straight lines and make it easy for the enemy, right? No, you gotta be careful. You gotta keep your head on a swivel. And I'm trying to really be careful because this California, all it takes is one good salvo and he just needs a couple or a few citadels and I am sent back to port like that in the snap of a hand, right? Or the snap of a hat. So we gotta be really careful. But um, other than that though, it seems like he's kiting away. We got an island between me and him. We have some distance and if he does shoot back at me, I'm gonna be able to dodge, hopefully. So that's why I'm starting to open up. Now, there is a carrier in this game as well, I know. Shocker. Uh, he hasn't really been making himself known until now uh, for us, so as you guys can see in here, uh, the AA is going off, and one thing too to mention about American Heavy Cruisers is their AA is amazing, right? They have great guns, they have great AA, also unfortunate we uh, didn't slap that Nuremberg, but I didn't aim that very well either, a little too low there, but you know, whatever. But uh, like I said, the AA is great. The, um, the, our, the just the overall artillery that Americans provide. It's amazing. And that's honestly why I think the Pensacola is the best ship at this tier. It's got great AA. It's got great guns. Fantastic guns, man. Um, you know, and especially if you get the right commander build for it and, you know, get a decent level commander and build into your guns. It, it makes it even more better. It's amazing what you can do with the ship. The only downside, though, with, these, with this cruiser here is obviously the giant citadel. But the turret traverse. The turret traverse is also a big issue. Other than that, everything else is really good, right? This thing's really squishy, and it has bad turret traverse. But everything else about it, the AA, the speed is pretty decent. It's got okay utility. Also, we just dev struck that Nuremberg. Yep, that just happened. Uh, I told you guys, stuff's going to pop off a little bit at the end here. Um, but, I mean, yeah. Uh, this thing overall is pretty good. Other than, the obviously, the Citadel and everything. Now, Ramat is broadside... And he's making it easy. And the two shells that hit him from my 8-inch uh, gun salvo there uh, was doubles, was was a citadel. Each one of those shells was a citadel. So, gotta love that. We're already up to six citadel hits. Yeah, if you can manage to get broadside cruisers with this cruiser, you're gonna absolutely just munch on them, man. For freaking breakfast. It's amazing what these guns can do to people. Even battleships. Like, battleships aren't safe either. You guys probably witnessed what I was doing to that California with the armor-piercing shells. Um, the next game that we're going to play after this one in the Pensacola, we're going to use a lot more high explosive and show you guys what the HE can do as well. In this game, though, it's all about the armor-piercing. But don't worry, the second game, too, we're going to do some nasty stuff with the AP uh, with the AP as well. We're not just going to use high explosive, but we're going to use a lot more of it. I don't think we've loaded HE once this game, if I'm not mistaken. We just never had to. Uh, we've been taking a lot of shots at over-angled and, and uh, you know, over-angled targets and targets that have big superstructures like California. And we've just been farming them, man. 75,000 damage so far. We got, a, we got a kill. We got a few citadels. I mean, nothing great, but the only ship that's left is a carrier. And I'm sure you guys can probably see where this is going. We're, we're going to be able to get some more shots on that carrier coming up here very shortly. We also did shoot down some of his aircraft as well. We shot down six planes, so there's that. And there's the carrier. It's the Furious. HMS Furious. And we're going to take a full... See, there's the guns right there struggling to catch up where I'm turning. Yeah, that's a big problem with this ship. Um, but you learn to deal with it if you're a good Pensacola captain. Now, Furious is broadside at 14 kilometers. And as you guys can see, we have no problem just penning the ever-living shit out of that Furious. Part of my language, but that's exactly what it is. We're just penetrating the fuck out of that guy. Oh my god. Three Citadels. We went from 70k to 100k, and the Carrier's Torpedoes are going to take him down, and that is the end of the first game of two games on today's video. Um, but yeah, great game though in the Pensacola. I mean, at the end there, we, we redeemed ourselves. 104,000 damage, Confederate high caliber, devastating strike, and we were top of the leaderboard with 3.1k base. And anyways, on to the next game here. On to the next game in the Pensacola. Uh, this time we're on a little bit of a bigger map, so we have some more room to kind of, you know, sail around and have some fun, right? Um, now this game has a lot more battleships in it, so I immediately swap from AP to HE. Also, keep in mind that this was the game right after that Pensacola game. I was like, you know what? 
Pensacola, that wasn't the greatest game in the world. Let me see if I can have a better game. And this one was better. Okay, so stay tuned, guys and gals out there. Also, if you guys are enjoying the video so far, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I know I'm trying to sneak that in there, sorry, but, you know, I got a YouTube channel. Someone, someone's got to promote themselves, right? Uh, me. So, it, seriously, though, guys, it is free. It does help out. I do appreciate all you guys out there that do support the channel in whatever ways. It's it's awesome. You guys are amazing. But, um, anyway, we got a Colorado out here. And, uh, well, he's broadside, and we're just going to start spamming some HE at him. This, uh, the last game, we did a lot more armor-piercing action. And, honestly, the AP in this situation, too, against this Colorado would be very effective as well. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to use the uh, AP, or the HE, this time around. And that's what we're doing. And, as you guys can see, we have no problems getting damage with the high explosive either. These 8-inch armor pier or <laughs> the armor piercing These 8-inch high-explosive rounds are also very good as well, and they have good fire chances as well. They're 8 inch guns, and as you guys can see, we just got a fire on that California. It's pretty historically accurate. California loves to burn, so you know, it makes sense. <laughs> I have to make that joke when a California catches on fire, do pardon me. But it gets hot over there, man, and we I think we just got a double fire, if I'm not mistaken. Was that a double fire on the Cali, or was that a fire on the Colorado? Oh no, California, DC. Maybe we did get a double fire on the California. I don't know. But anyway, we got it. We got two fires, and we're up to 17,000 damage. We're doing okay. Nothing too crazy, right? We're kiting around. We're using our range to our advantage. This is a pretty open map, all things considering. So we're trying to, you know, utilize our range more on this map. I think that's really important here. And we're not going to take a whole lot of damage, pretty much, for the rest of this game until the end. Like, so just, yeah. Uh, also, we're getting shot at across the map. There is a smoke screen over there. And if you guys look at the mini-map, it was a cruiser that was last spotted that way. It's a flint, by the way. Yeah, a flint is shooting at me at like 16, 17 kilometers, which is hilarious. In case you guys don't know, uh, the flint has 5-inch guns. It's an Atlanta-class light cruiser, and he's trying to hit me at 15, uh, 15, 16, 17 kilometers. He's getting okay close, but at the same time, not really. I mean, that's a bold strategy, taking shots at a cruiser that's going 30-plus knots and actively turning... You know, with 5-inch guns. Those are some floaty motherfucking shells right there. But anyways, I mean, we're still, you know, just sailing back towards Alpha side. And we're going to keep on slinging out these 8-inch American Freedom rounds down, you know, down range. And keep on getting fires, because that's what we do. And now we swap over to the armor piercing. We got a perma fire on that California, you know, just like real life. <laughs> and, uh, well, down he goes. He gets torpedoed into the Shadow Realm by the Akatsuki. And, uh, well, that's the first blood to our team there. Not a bad start, though. I mean, hey, the beginning of the game, we're, like, three minutes in, and we already have almost 50,000 damage in the first few minutes in a Tier 5 cruiser? That's not half bad, if you don't mind me saying so. Like, and that's just with the high explosive. And now we're going to start using some of the AP, because we've got a broadside Aoba out here. And Aoba, I have no problem Citadel and you, especially at 12 kilometers. 12 to 10 kilometers in that area... Like, 10 to 15 kilometers. Between there, it is it is open season with these American 203s, man. It is open fucking season with these 203s. We're going to have no problem ripping this Aoba a new one. And, yeah, double Citadel there. I mean, just what can I say, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, let's be real, that Aoba not playing very well. He's just selling broadside, not even trying to make any course adjustments. But, I mean, we got to take what we can get. And as you guys just saw, I mean, that is what Pensacola does best. It punishes people. Even if he angled, I would have swapped over to uh, to HE and just absolutely f saturated him and plastered him with that HE. I mean, you guys saw what we were doing to the battleships. Imagine what this HE is capable of doing against destroyers and, and, you know, cruisers especially. So overall, man, just Pensacola's guns are just... Mwah, they're amazing. Now... I haven't really talked about the consumables on this ship. Um, we're running, we got sonar and we have planes. Okay, the planes are nice to have for spotting things and obviously helping with en enemy aircraft. Um, but also the sonar, most American heavy cruisers, actually all of them up to Baltimore and everything past that, they all get um, sonars. And they're not the worst sonars in the world, but they're better to use, you know, later on in the game, especially when you're pushing into caps where there's probably a destroyer there. Wink, wink, that's going to be coming up here you know, towards the end of the game, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're saving our sonars, though, because we're using our range right now, we're not really, you know, getting into any caps, we're staying back, you know, because Pensacola has to stay back, right, we know Pensacola blows up in spectacular fashion, so we really got to be careful, 
So that's why I haven't used any of them yet. I haven't needed to. But as you guys just saw there, Sinop takes a shot at us. We turn in and we try to dodge those shells and they bracket around us. Thank God, man. It's nice to get a little bit of freaking luck on my side for a change. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, we're up to 86,000 damage in the first, what, five, six minutes of the game. And we're not doing half bad, man. And this is a Sinop we're just, yeah, you know, causing a, a rough day uh, too. Uh, now the Flint, enemy Flint just torpedoed our destroyer, our Genevni, I believe. I don't know how you take American torpedoes in a Russian destroyer, but hey, you know, I didn't know the Flint had the uh, Mark 48 guided, uh, wire guided torpedoes yet. Because <laughs> damn. Uh, but no, all jokes aside, I'm, I'm quite surprised that, though, that that DD took an American torpedo, especially fired from a Flint. A Flint torpedo is pretty slow. And it's pretty easy to dodge those, so that's um, that's pretty embarrassing. But hey, you know, shit happens, right? Ship happens, <laughs> so you know, whatever. Anyway, um, this pet, this sent up though is still alive. He's still hanging in there. He is, um, yeah, he is still hanging in there. But he's only on like what four or five bars of health. So hopefully, a few more salvos and a few more fires, he should be down. I mean, as you guys can see, the Russian battleships are pretty well armored, and we're still getting decent little bits of penetrations, and still we're getting, obviously, uh, fires, right? Uh, that's the whole idea there. Um, he's, he's triple fired. That man is dead. Yeah, that man's dead. I mean, as you guys can see, that man is burning hard right now. Um, yeah, he's on, what, 3K, 2K health. He's basically donezo, bunzo. Back to portzo. And uh, Sharnhorst gets the kill on him. Uh, with the fire there and this is all you know this is a pretty you know close game right we have we still are ahead on points quite a bit but in terms of ships we're about equal we have one more ship than the enemy but we lost all of our destroyers this could go either way right you, you really got to be uh, careful especially in these kind of games when it's this close like this enemy only has four ships we have five if they decided to pull their stuff together they could pull this game back obviously that's you know not going to happen spoiler alert we're not going to let that happen but it could happen if you know you let it, right? If you're, uh, if you just decide to throw all, you know, logic and skill out the window, it can happen. Now, what we're trying to do here is we're taking the charge. Now we haven't taken a, any damage, like at all. We haven't taken a single bit of damage. This is where we're gonna start taking some damage because we are, t we are leading the charge right now. We are pushing in. We're dodging torpedoes, as you guys can see. We, we popped their sonar. We popped their sonar because, you know, we need to. Uh, there's probably torpedoes coming. There's also somebody in the Bravo cap. It's got to be one of the destroyers. Now, Flint, you're about to meet your maker, buddy. Two citadels, just like that. Half plus some of his health gone. We hit eight shells there. Two of them were citadels plus a bunch of penetrations. And just like that, we are going to two salvo that Flint. Two salvoing a tier six light cruiser like that is just amazing. What else can I say? But yeah, as you guys just saw... We, we literally just lost a quarter of our health just to a couple of salvos from a flint. See, that's just how, you know, vulnerable of uh, this ship is. It's a glass cannon, right? Um, that's how most, you know, cruisers are at Tier 5, but especially the Pensacola. It's a pencil, man. It'll snap if, you know, if it gets, you know, hit, right, in the right places. So you really got to be careful. Uh, leading the charge in the Pensacola, it's only good in this kind of situation when the enemy is in a, in a very interesting... Uh, uh, situation to say the least now there are some torpedoes off the port side um, Coming our way that those are not from the flint. I do not believe I think those are from the other destroyer that's out there uh, The Monahan yeah two racks that is 100% from the Monahan um, The destroyer that's up in front here is the Akatsuki. He's sitting in his smoke screen So we're going to try to close the distance we stopped shooting because we don't want to be spotted if we can help it now there is Akatsuki's uh, one of his racks there of torpedoes we're going to be able to dodge those pretty nicely there. But that was just one rack. I'm looking for two more racks. So that's one out of three. We know Akatsuki has nine torpedoes. That's two and that's three. Okay. Akatsuki doesn't have torpedoes for another 45 to 50 seconds. So we're going to start just pushing that smoke screen. We know he's right there. I'm spotted again. The The enemy Monahan off my left side is spotting me. And that destroyer is right there, man. I need to get right there. Come on. How is he not spotted? This has to be like two kilometers away, right? That dude must be, like, booking it then, because I cannot see him. Where's he at? Okay, he's not spotted yet. Interesting. But um, oh, any second now, we should be able to spot him, right? I don't know where the heck he's at. He's got to be moving out that way, right? And then he pops up right there, and he has AP loaded. He actually knows when to load AP. 
And as you guys just saw, he just got a Citadel there on me. We That's something you got to be careful about is, you know, destroyers can Citadel you. Uh, kudos to that Akatsuki for actually playing like that. Very nicely done using the AP uh, on your Akatsuki. That's something you don't see out of, out of a lot of uh, Japanese destroyers. But unfortunately for him, it isn't enough, and down he goes. That's our third kill of the game, and we're up to 129,000 damage. And the enemy Monahan is now spotted out there. As I, you know, as I, as I predicted, and um, he's been spotting us, and he's been trying to torpedo us, so um, he decides to turn away, smoke up, because uh, he's the only one out there right now. Now, this Colorado out here that we, you know, farmed at the beginning of the game for a little bit of damage, um, he's still alive as well. He's in a fight right now with our battleship that's way back there um, in, in our spawn, so we really don't have to worry too much about that. Now, I'm trying to debate. Do I want to, like, back up and shoot at that Colorado, or do I want to, you know, just wait in the cap, not get spotted? Well, I say not get spotted. There's, you know, I'm spotted again because the Monahan actually knows how to spot. Um, unfortunately for him, though, his torpedoes, you know, aren't, aren't, uh, they don't have enough range to arm, so we're okay. But like I said, I'd, I'd rather, though, just sit here and wait for that DD to make a mistake or, you know, just stay unspotted or whatever. But we got the cap, and I'm not going to go chase down that destroyer. Um, I don't have radar, I don't have any of that, so we're not going to chase down that guy, especially since we're only on 9,000 health, and yeah, it's really not worth my time. I'm going to go towards the Charlie Cap instead. Now, I'm still worried about that Colorado. I got my guns facing towards that smoke screen and whatnot where that last DD is. Oh, and th oh, there he is. There he is. He's actually spotted. He's pushing our battleships for some reason, so we're going to start opening up on him. He's turning. He's tr He's trying to dodge. And Colorado takes a shot at us, but it was high explosive. <laughs> he shot a salvo of high explosive at us. If he had AP loaded, I probably would have died. But I don't know, man. For some reason, the Colorado is using HE. That's, yeah. I mean, it is a no camo Colorado, so what do you expect? But anyway, the Colorado nonetheless has gone down. We don't got to worry about him. We did get a few hits on that destroyer. He went unspotted. I'm trying to take some cheeky blind fire shots, and you know, unfortunately, we don't hit any. Of it. We don't hit any of them. But what, wouldn't that have been amazing if we actually did connect the salvo, blind, and got the kill? Oh, that would have made it perfect. Would have been the cherry on the top. But either way, nonetheless, two back to back. You know, 100,000 plus games in Pensacola, not too bad, especially since we've been actually doing quite a bit, of, quite a bit of stuff. We've been smacking cruisers around. Shooting at destroyers, just obliterating battleships, or not really obliterating them, but plastering them with all sorts of shells, AP and HE alike. But uh, anyways, yeah, nonetheless, that was our uh, second and best game of the two right there. 134,000 damage, Confederate, and a high caliber medal. And look at the team result. Wait for it. Come on, Ghost, go over. 3,900 base XP. We almost had 4K base in a tier 5 cruiser and i'm clicking a bunch i'm like oh my god <laughs> what a game man so i hope you all did enjoy it nonetheless man what a good time in pensacola i think this is the best cruiser at tier five if you can learn to just position properly and, and knock it shot at if you can help it and utilize those guns you're gonna have a great time but anyways here's the commander in case you guys are wondering i'm running norman scott we got nikolai kuznetsov and francesco mambelli as inspirations we got beyond range igniter punch through fixated and refill station that's how i get my reload so low and all that but anyways ladies and gentlemen nonetheless thank you all for watching and uh yeah have a fantastic uh, rest of your weekends man that's the pensacola absolutely love this ship it's fantastic and the new orleans the baltimore and even the buffalo they're the same way man amazing ships and of course the premium uh indianapolis as well but anyways have a great weekend everybody peace out stay healthy as always